Yeah, 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 the hype beast is here. The hype beast, ah, oh man. When is the last time you saw your boy start a video with a hype beast? It already got me breaking protocol. Newer videos, I'm usually standing up. I'm sitting down again. I'm starting off hype. What's up everyone, it's your boy Scott. Welcome to the Scott Report and the voice of the Warriors. We're here to talk about Promise Neverland. Episode one, first impressions. Or is it really even a first impression to me because I've been telling you guys for two years to get on this series and the moment has finally arrived. The most anticipated anime for me of 2019 is finally here with Promise Neverland. Episode one, Clover works in the hot seat with this series because a lot is riding on the success of this series being the most successful or one of the most successful series in Japan coming out of Shonen Jump. Japan already knows its goal. It's just up to the Western culture to get on board. And boy, did they go in with this first episode doing exactly what I thought that they would do and that I wanted them to do, adapting the entire first chapter, which was double size, give you that twist that we know us manga readers has been telling anime oldies, don't watch any previews, just go into this blind, you will be mind fucked in, oh man, just to see all of this animated, to see Emma, my son Norman, my son Ray, mama, see sister crone in that opening, to see these creatures that we're dealing with, to see how they move, how they react, because this is going to bypass the manga because it's visual. Promise Neverland overall is a psychological series. It's a dark shonen. It's a very thought-provoking series, but now that we have all this air of eeriness and everything that we have in front of us, now animated makes it even more unsettling, and Cloverworks Clap it up for Cloverworks. Clap it up for Cloverworks. They've been on a roll. I mean, regardless of how you feel about Darling and Franks, they gave us that. I mean, production-wise, that was pretty damn good. They are fresh off of giving us Bunny Girl Senpai taking on the next biggest thing with Promise Neverland. And boy, did they not disappoint with this episode. The hype beast behind this series is so big that we actually got it an entire day early. And it's on every major streaming. It's on Hulu, it's on High Dive, it's on Funimation, it's on Crunchyroll. Everybody is behind this monster, which is the next big thing. And it got me doing something that I said I wasn't gonna do. I said I wasn't gonna, I knew I was gonna do a first impression, but now it got me actually wanting to come back every week and do a review for this series because I get to relive all this again and it's gonna feel so good to be in this world again, in the suspense feel world again, where you're never gonna know what's coming next and to see all these monsters, to see them look, the feel of them, to see all of this moving, it's just a good thing and uh, I gotta give props to winners due. They need a standing bow to Uberworld, the great Uberworld for that opening. Oh my God, I, I was skeptical because I thought the opening was gonna be a little bit too fast paced for this type of series. But once them horns came in and Overworld started doing those things with the na 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 na, this very well might be the opening of the season. Definitely it's gonna be in my top favorite openings of the year. And once again, in January, we already got one of those going. I didn't expect the opening to fit so well with this series, but Overworld put their foot in and did their thing. And then the ending as well with Koshi Nie, basically being the spiritual successor of Ling Sagiri Tosai. <sighs> if you watch the first part of Tokyo Ghoul Re, it has the same type of feel as that opening and it fits the series so well with the visuals and everything that they had in that as well. It's the type of song that I would have expected to be the opening and we got that as the ending and it just sounds so nice. 10 out of 10 for both the opening and the ending for Promise Neverland. Uh, once again, the first episode did cover the first chapter. We're going to get a 12 episode run and that's going to hopefully cover the first arc. That would be a perfect place for it to stop. And it's going to be a lot of comparisons between this and Made in Abyss. And as far as when it stops, I think it's going to stop at a place that's going to be so good. You're going to be thirsting for more. It might make you pick up the manga. 
And I don't think they need to go any further than the first arc. I've said this before because that would be a perfect stopping point and then we can wait till season two. I don't really want to get into spoilers, but at the same time, I want you guys to check this out. I'm pretty sure if you've been on social media of any sort, then the, the flow of this series and what's going on has already been spoiled for you. But we have a group of children in an orphanage called Gracefield House. They have a mama who's caretaking for them. These kids are the best of the best and the brightest. They're the smartest. And they're being taught and trained for a specific thing and by the end of the episode you will see exactly what this is for and that is the twist in itself this is dark and all 38 these kids they need to be protected it's just seeing sister crone seeing mama seeing ray and emma and norman in this opening and everything it's just bringing back all of these feelings i know i cannot absolutely wait to see sister crone being adapted because that was one of my favorite characters she's probably going to show up like episode three maybe episode four at the latest to see this cat and mouse game, to see in the opening that the tag sequence, and I don't want to go into spoilers, guys, I really don't. I'm just so excited to see this and the foreshadowing that we have in episode one. Looking at it as a manga reader and things that we're going to get later. This is why this series is compared to things like Death Note because of the type of things that we're going to get on a psychological level. And I get that it's not going to be for everybody because we're all different. We have our own opinions, but you're going to see a mix of things. It's going to have a Boku no Hero effect where you're going to have people that's going to absolutely love this series. You're going to have people that absolutely hate it. And then you're going to have people on both sides of the fence doing it just because it's cool to do. Because that's what goes on now. And there's a term called overhype. And, you know, I hate to sound like old man Scott. But you anime watchers who just started getting into anime like three, four, five years ago. You guys are a certain beast. You guys are something else, I tell you. Because it's something you guys throw around called overhype. Where you guys just absolutely won't watch something because everybody's talking about it. And then when you do watch it, you're upset. Like, oh, everybody overhyped this. Like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Uh -huh. The thing is... If something's overhyped, you should go into it and watch it on your own. Make your own decisions. Don't let people sway your decisions to where you're going. You're going to see that type of effect with Promise Neverland, but do not miss on this series. Watch it for yourself. Draw your own conclusions. I feel you won't be disappointed. I'm going to be the hype beast. I'm going to overhype it because this is one of my favorite series probably of all time. And I did not expect Cloverworks to do this series so well. And again, I know this is only episode one. We still got 11 more to go before things go down. It can very well change. But as an intro, very well done. Very masterful. Very suspenseful. You know, there are some little things. I have to point these things out as a reviewer that could be a little bit off. But at the same time, it's the things that's off that makes it so eerie. Like sometimes, you know, some of the shading or some of the backgrounds are a little bit off at times. But that just adds to the unsettledness, especially when you got to the truck scene. The truck scene near the end, that still had my heart racing. I don't know where it's going. I know where it's going. So I can imagine the hype and anticipation that anime viewers had. This series is going to take you on a fantastic ride. I cannot wait to see it. I mean, this whole video, if anything, is me basically giving it my stamp of approval. It doesn't even need a watch or not or a three-episode test. That first episode will draw you in, and it's only going to get more and more better from there. That's how I feel about it. I mean, I know this is probably just a hype video, but that's what it was intended to be because the time has finally arrived. I can finally talk to you guys about it, which is why I want to do, you know, more videos on it. Maybe I will chime in every week because I want to see what the anime only think about this. I want to see your thoughts. I want to see your theories. Because the biggest thing about Promise Neverland is going to be a theory crafts. And maybe after it's over, we can go on to the manga together, even though I'm already caught up. You know, maybe I do want to get back into the manga, but I'm in a weird place with that too because I don't want to spoil you guys. So we'll just have to see where things go. The trials and tribulations and things that these kids are going to go through. I mean, this is going to be a feat in itself. And even though we still are in episode one, there's so much to unlock. But I want to know who your favorite characters are so far. I know me personally, Norman is my son. I love this kid to death. And then there's Ray. I can't choose between those two. And Emma, I'll go ahead and say this now. It's going to take Emma a while. But Emma's going to be great. I love Mama. I love every character in this series. I mean, I'm going to be 100% biased with this series. But how did that make you guys feel? I mean, to see that this lady, this Mama, is taking care of these kids. And you, you think that she's there and she's all nice and sweet and they love her. But she's really just shoveling them off to the slaughter. Ah, this is going to be a fun series.
And before I get out of here, I can see that it's probably gonna get some type of flack because you know they tore Goblin Slayer apart. And then recently with Legend of I'm sorry, Rising of the Shield Hero, you know, it was that scene near the end of the episode that dealt with the girl that was a slave and uh, people just being so sensitive about that. Uh, it goes back to what I was saying about the current state of anime watchers and them not being able to take their personal feelings and see things just as media. Because if something like what happened in Shield Hero makes you upset, then you don't want to watch something like Game of Thrones. Oh my God, you will be traumatized. But it's fiction, it's media. When you're dealing with these type of things, this is expected. I expect a little bit of flack of backlash from Promise Neverland. Re uh, reception for it has been overwhelmingly positive right now but you know somebody's gonna slide in like oh no this is child abuse this is bad what they're doing to these kids but at the end of the day it's fiction and it's dark fiction so we'll just have to see where that goes hopefully the fun police won't come in and start trying to ruin this series either but we just have to see where it goes but i'm gonna leave this in your hands guys let me know what you guys think do you want to see me cover this every week because again i have covered the manga already so it will be certain parts I do want to see and come in and chime in about, but I'm also interested in seeing what you guys think about the series as well. So maybe I can use the episodes as a bridge for that. Again, this did come out early. The regular day that it comes out is going to be on Thursdays. They decided to release it today as a premiere to get the hype piece going and everybody is on the hype train. This is hands down going to probably be my anime of the year. Bring it that made of abyss type of impact is going to maybe even rival Boku no Hero this year. I don't know. We'll just have to see. But let me know what you guys thought of the episode in the comments below. Again, I know this isn't much of a review. This was more of a hype video. And you know, at the same time, it was more of an impressions as well. Because I can say I'm very damn impressed with how this episode came out. But I want to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, go ahead and drop a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's there's not short of content for you guys to indulge on this channel. And as I always say, you guys be anywhere on YouTube right now. Just chose to listen to me. I really appreciate that. So thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out. See you soon. Get out of here!